Today was the day I was going to do my first YouTube live session. I was going to celebrate 250 miles commuting on the Redux 3. It's been a great bike. But when I showed up at work, the owner, I guess a little jealous seeing me bike around, had pulled out his bike. This is a 1973 Lambert Grand Prix. He rode this thing for over 20 years, but for the past 25 years, it's been upstairs in storage. He got it out and I looked up information about it. I'd never heard of it. And in 1973, this thing was the bee's knees, his term. Lambert proudly touted their aerospace design in all the advertisements and also used advanced alloys for the time. The frame is an alloy steel, but the front fork is an aluminum alloy. This may be the first production aluminum alloy fork that was on a bike. Trying to be a technological groundbreaker on a massive production scale inevitably led to problems, and Lambert Viscount had issues with the fork. As a matter of fact, this fork has been dubbed the fork of death because it can break with no reason, no warning, even on flat ground. A quick check and armed with the information that I found online, and this is the original fork. Which is no surprise because he mentioned he didn't know there was a recall. So I guess it's a good thing that the non-original tubes and tires are shot. That's the only thing not original on this bike. Everything else, handcrafted Lambert of England. And they must want you to know that because they put that everywhere. Almost every component on this bike has either an L or Lambert branding on it. Even the brake arms, which by the way, still work. I don't know how well they'll stop, but they at least clamp nicely, especially after 25 years in storage. The over-the-top graphics extend to the handlebars, where you've got a 24 karat gold foil sticker letting you know that this is a handcrafted Lambert professional bike. Quality, fork aside, must have been the paramount concern when manufacturing these bikes. This is the original hand grips, fabric grips still intact after almost 45 years. This bike was ridden well into the 80s. Here's a good look at that aluminum alloy fork that was the undoing of Lambert Viscount. It's almost too bad it didn't work out because the rest of this bike looks really cool. I also noticed that this thing has quick release skewers. If anyone that was alive back in 1973 can tell me, was this a thing back then or was this something that came later and Lambert Viscount was a pioneer? I look at this bike like a perfectly preserved artifact from 45 years ago. So it's neat to see how they've changed routing and mounting cables over the years. In the case of this bike, they mounted them on the top of the tube. On our modern bikes, we usually run them under the tubes or in the tubes. It's also interesting to see the placard here, Grand Prix of England, handcrafted, next to those shifters down on the down tube. Who thought that was a good idea ever? These bikes also came with a speedometer. This is the original magnet. He still has the original speedometer in a box somewhere. He's trying to locate it. We've covered that the fork is aluminum and the frame is steel, but it's a 1027 alloy steel that at the time was a very lightweight steel. The entire bike only weighs 22 pounds. The original saddle is as uncomfortable as it looks. It also features a quick release seat post. He didn't know that was on the bike. He had always ridden it at the same adjustment level, and he mentioned that he wished he would have known that in 1978 when he forgot the combination to this lock. The original Lambert drivetrain still working great after all these years. The only thing that's missing is the original leather toe straps on these pedals. He said they biodegraded back in about 1995. Again, it's impressive to see how well this has held up over time. Not only does it still look good, but it still shifts out practically perfectly. He said he had only adjusted this thing one time over the years. When you get towards the rear of the bike, you see a little less Lambert branding. You see a 5-speed cassette there, and below that, a Simplex rear derailleur. Now, I looked up a little bit about this company, and apparently, they failed for the same reasons that Lambert did, trying to do too much too fast. It's curious to see that the labels say that this bike's 15 speed. 2 times 5 is not 15. Must be common core math. Upon closer inspection, I can see the outline of what looks like a sticker that overlaid the 5. So maybe they had a 10 speed production bike and a 15 speed race bike. I don't know, I couldn't find any information. But it is only 10 speeds. I gotta admit, even after all the warnings, I kinda wanna ride this bike. Maybe if I can find some tubes for these 27 inch tires, 
might give it a shot. After all, he wrote it for a couple of decades, never had any problems. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and stay tuned for more great bike videos.